now we, I want you to meet him. He's he really was different. awesome. It's incredible to think about designing the molecule. Right. Wow. Oh, is it what do you see as you twist the top? I am Dr. David Baskin. I'm a neurosurgeon. I'm the director of the Kenneth R. Peak uh, Brain and Pituitary Tumor Treatment Center here at Houston Methodist. I have a lot of jobs. My main job is to try to do something to ultimately cure glioblastoma. And to that end, we're marshalling lots of efforts. Clinicians, researchers, basic scientists, clinical trials, any and everything we can do to make a difference for patients with brain tumors and particularly malignant brain tumors. Fire a pretty radical resection. Mm -hmm. right? So TOCA, TOCA 511 requires that I need to believe that I can get the residual tumor down to one cubic centimeter. Mm -hmm. Now, they give you a little wee -way, leeway. Mm -hmm. Like, what if it's one and a half cubic centimeters, you get it anyway. Fine. But they trust the investigators not to put people in. I mean, we're pretty well vetted yeah. that we don't think we can do that. Way. The adenovirus, phase three, won't have that restriction. Okay. The DC vax and the uh, ICT-107, yeah, that's pretty much uh, a crap. We don't know which one's going to work better, but they're both... I, I, so I've talked to each patient about them, and people tend to kind of like one or the other. They do, you know, like you, they do a tremendous amount of research, and they kind of tend to go with one or the other. Uh, from a practical point of view right now, DC Vax is on hold because they have some manufacturing problems. So oh. now, you, you know, and that will happen. Some of these, they're sure. very labor-intensive studies, so I'll put one of them on the other. I'll give everyone an opt 100%. Mm -hmm. uh, because you can use Optum with these. Yeah, the, 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 the tumor, the tumor treatment. That's right. Well, I don't have time to tell you everything. There's a new thing about it, oh, wow. which is, if you think about it, if you just throw these electrodes on the head, well, no tumor is directly in the center of the head, right? So wouldn't you want to focus it there? Mm -hmm. So a very small subset of the certified providers for NovaCure, which is now called Optin, are NovaTal certified. And in NovaTal, what you do is you spend about 45 minutes with a specialized computer mm -hmm. measuring the tumor diameters, calculating ratios, and then there's one extra step to that, which is you say, okay, I operate on this area. I think this part of the tumor is actually more dead than that. You know, this is your own impression, being someone who's treated this person right. and knowing that history. Mm -hmm. and this is important because the, the company couldn't know that. And you fine-tune how you're going to place the electrodes mm -hmm. to get that maximum alignment. You saw how they were, sh I, you didn't see the whole video, I cut it off, but you want to get an alignment in a vertical track and a horizontal track to try to have a cell division, and you want it to be, you want it to be bisecting the tumor in three dimensions. Okay. So using this tuning system, NovaTal, you end up not putting on the electrode symmetrically. You end up putting them on like this or like this or like that, depending right. where the tumor is. Mm -hmm. We don't know if that's going to make a difference yet, but it, it should. It should make a difference if you're focusing it more. And see, you know, if you're a company, again, for them to get to this, they've probably spent $50 million, mm -hmm. right, and they're a small company. In fact, their stock came out on the market and it dropped, I don't know. But, um, so they can't say, what if we use 1,000 hertz and 5,000 hertz and 10,000 hertz and 20,000 hertz, and what if we ramped up and down, and what if we use a sinusoidal curve, or what if we use the, you know, uh, a, a, a pause. But all of those things could make a tremendous difference in the therapy. It's a completely brand new thing. Yeah, nobody, nobody, say, ever, nobody ever thought it would work. Yeah. I should, I mean, I'll show you one other thing about that. And I, uh, if, if, I'm, if I'm boring, you tell me. I'll no, stop. you're not. And mm -hmm. I, I look at these things because I actually deal with some of this stuff. Do not because it's a biological Our okay. low intensity, intermediate What's frequency, the, alternating electric fields used to treat cancerous tumors. Let me show you. What I want you to show you is look at what happens to unidirectional forces at the bridge separating the daughter cells during the second of these forces are expected to interfere with spindle tubulin orientation Same due to the large dipole moment of tubulin. 
Since this original finding, so, uh, ongoing stuff. Oh, while you know, look, this the is culture on the a right, cancer cell the cell culture. Culture. Watch what happens. In the following films, we see two identical cultures of cervical cancer cells followed in time lapse under the microscope. The culture on the right is an untreated control, while TT fields are being applied continuously to the culture on the left. So the first difference happen. between the cultures appears about two hours after treatment. Cell divisions are seen in the okay. TT. Uh -oh. In the control culture, cells have already started to divide. It takes 12 hours for the first cell to round up for mitosis in the treated culture. So it's not dividing. They're in addition, like crazy cell on the right. cleavage cytokinesis is delayed and takes three hours to finish. The next difference between the cultures is that in the treated culture, cells round up for mitosis. However, they are not able to complete the normal division process at all. They remain arrested in mitosis for about five hours and then die through programmed cell death, apoptosis. This mitotic arrest and apoptosis is seen in dividing cells only. The so, dying cancer cells so in the TT treated culture exhibit membrane like clubbing, yeah. the hallmark morphologic characteristic so, of programmed cell death, also known as apoptosis. Look, look, look how packed After yeah, almost right. two days of TT field treatment, wow. the difference between the control the and treated cultures is clear. Cancer cells fill the entire available space in the control culture, while in the TT field's treated culture, only those cells that did not attempt to divide remain alive. Cells undergoing apoptosis are also known to bind annexin to the plasma this is membrane. How they, the red this color is the how they show shows annexin bound to the membrane of cancer cells important. treated by TT. What I wanted you to see was look at, I mean, to me, that's extraordinarily that powerful yeah. seeing all those cancer cells. That actually, glioblastoma, which is what TT fields are FDA approved mm -hmm. for, if you put a glioblastoma in a dish, it'll grow over the edge of the dish. Oh, it's so aggressive. Oh, it just fills the dish, yeah. and it literally starts growing over the edges. So I mean, you know, that was a cervical cancer. I'm not sure why that was why that they they used that. The other thing, and you know about this, is is to do personalized chemotherapy. Um, the idea being, and I wish I had more time to go over all these things, but there's something called the Cancer Genome Atlas. Are you aware of that? The TGCA. Mm -hmm. that? So that was an NIH initiative, and what they did is they took I think it was maybe six or seven hundred glioblastomas, and they said, we know every gene in the human genome. Mm -hmm. Let's sequence it. So they did that. And they came up with four different types of glioblastoma, four different basic protile profiles. Mm -hmm. It turned out each one of those had a completely different prognosis. And each one of those had certain pathways that were upregulated and certain pathways that were downregulated. So if you, if you think about it, there are four different tumors, or maybe there are 20 different tumors. So what we're doing is we're taking every tumor, we're growing in addition, we're doing cell cultures, and we're looking at DNA damage, but we're also now scanning. Turns out if you go through the TGCA, there's at most, well, if you go through glioblastoma genes, there's about 100. If you go through major cancer genes, there's about 600. So for cost, because I can get this done for a patient, and the, the insurance actually pays for most of it. For about $1,500, I can get 600 gene panel on every That's because we're part of a consortium, a research consortium, so we get a deeper, deeper discount. Anyway, the point is, Mr. Peak, case in point, we did that. And he, unfortunately, and I don't want to violate any HIPAA, but he wasn't a candidate for some of these studies for a variety of reasons. But we found a pathway in his particular genetic structure, which actually he didn't fit the, the four. As you can imagine, that's kind of like, okay, there's only four patterns. Well, guess what? That's not true. You got five. Because you have, well, because you, in, in pattern one, tw gene 23, 72, 91 are up. Well, his, some of his genes were up that didn't fit any particular pattern. Mm -hmm. So what do you do with that? We know what most of these genes do. We know what pathway do we do. So one of his genes that were really upregulated was a gene we see in leukemia, which you don't usually see in glioblastoma. So we gave him an anti-leukemia drug, which was FDA approved, which would target that pathway. His tumor melted away for almost a year. Wow. So 
you know, obviously, <laughs> it no, can't, it no, can't you're but the point is, yeah. that's another whole powerful system sure. to tap, is what are the genetics of the tumor. And you could go through all these other studies, and I have more, I just don't have time to, to sure. tell you about all of them, but you could then iterate that further by going back and saying, okay, what would happen with the genetics? So one very, and I don't have a slide on this, but one of the more common ones is the MGMT promoter. Have you heard about that? No. What? So now, well, yes, I have heard about so it. If I you have a glioblastoma, well. they'll ask you, is your MGMT uh, promoter methylated or unmethylated? And what that translates to is cancer cells are smart. Mm -hmm. If you give them a chemotherapy and it, it damages their DNA, which is what most of the chemotherapy does, they get enzymes that repair the DNA. Right. If you're unmethylated, your repair enzymes are way up. You take chemotherapy and boom, the, the tumor can repair it rapidly. So it turns out that if you're, un if you're methylated, your survival curve is much better. And you absolutely want to use tenzolamide. Okay. So that's, that's now almost every, I won't say every hospital, but most major centers will do that routinely, not as a research. What is your MGMT? But that's just one of at least 600 examples. And if I know someone's MGMT methylated or unmethylated, I'm going to pick a different course for them, mm -hmm. just based on that one thing. Well, there's 600 of them. And by the oh way, my. if you take all the variations in permutations, there's probably 600,000, right? Yeah. I mean, what are the variations of 600 genes? So I'm not saying I pretend to understand all that, but I'm hiring a guy who's called a bioinformatician, bioinformatics, <laughs> is the science of these genetic changes okay. to see what we can sort out. And what we're just doing now is we're doing 600 gene panels on everybody. The agreement I have with these people who they have a very smart PhD in that company is they provide us with metabolic pathway analysis, which is, okay, if these genes are abnormal, what pathways are abnormal? That's how I can pick a leukemia drug from Mr. P. Right. But there's much more information there than that. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't uh, we don't know it all yet. But it's just another whole area of, of research. Bob Rostomoli, who's coming to work with me in December, January, his whole thing is something called RNA twists. And RNA twists are yet another way in which this all gets modified after the DNA. Mm -hmm. He's got some NIH grants on, on RNA twists. So you see there's a lot of different you, things. You've got multiple avenues of attack for all of these things that you're working on right. here. And you, it looks like you're moving forward on all of them. Well, you know what? Um, I never held a gun in my life. Well, that's not true. I was an Eagle Scout, so I had a rifle. A rifle, a rifle you had a rifle. At the range right? merit. What was it called? Marksmanship merit. Okay. Right? Because mm -hmm. I went to camp and they had 22 rifles at the, at the range. Right? It's the only gun I never held. I come to Texas, and of course, the goal of boys in Texas is this one would take you hunting, Doc. Absolutely. <laughs> so I went hunting and I looked this up and I went and bought a 410 shotgun. Okay. Because that seemed to be very precise. And they said, Doc. <laughs> you don't know what you're doing, boy. I said, what do you mean? He said, you need, it. and they handed me this gigantic 12-gauge shotgun with three-inch magnum shells. I said, what would I want to shoot that for? I said, it's going to hurt my shoulder. They said, Doc, you want to hit the bird, you have to have as many BBs in the air as possible. <laughs> and that stuck in my head, you know, because that's really what this all is. If I knew which one of these things would work, why would I be doing it? Exactly. Uh, to me, I want a 12-gauge shotgun. I want as many BBs in the air as possible. If you're going to give me a three-inch shell, that's what I'm going to use. Because until I hit the home run, you can't, you know, another thing my father used to say, you can't catch a fish with your line out of the water. Right. you got to be in the game. Martin used the similar metaphor because I'm in the oil business, and he said, you don't find anything if you don't drill. you got to drill. Right? you got to drill. You know, and you got to drill a bunch of dry holes. Yeah. Which is frustrating to you guys when you make a donation. Maybe your donation is going to work, maybe it isn't. We don't know that. But it's what it's about. It's what about science it's about. I mean, you know, this is such a horrible disease. I don't have to convince you that. You no, know, we know. Uh, that, you know, yeah, I mean, let's just put it this way. I live and breathe this stuff. You know, 
know, probably to my craziness. My wife is a, was a nurse surgery ICU nurse. We were married 20 to 25 years ago. She still sees my sees all my patients post op. Oh my! So she's very engaged with this, mm -hmm. and that's been really helpful because you know a regular woman wouldn't really understand this kind of passion, but she does. And when I was on vacation, I answered calls every day with patients. I got That's why I try not to bother you. But you don't know. bother me. It's, you know, it, it, people don't understand. It doesn't really bother me. Okay. I'm with my family. I'm having a good time. I spend, and my, every day I spend two hours. I wrote seven papers and one book chapter. My goodness. Because uh, <laughs> I don't dislike what I do. That's I don't find that, like, I don't come to work hating what I do. I love what I do. I want to make a difference in my lifetime if I possibly can. Uh, you so, so we're, you know, this is what we're doing, and now I can, now I'll show you one more thing. Okay. So these are our Martin stuff, and you may have already told you, you saw the monocom, you already know about these, right? Yeah, the smart bombs? Yeah, yeah. would you want me to run through that quick or She no? could probably see it. I'd okay. love to. Okay. If I have to see something three or four times to grasp it. Well, okay, so uh, a lot of, of cancer now is talking about targeted delivery systems. So what you want to do is target things. And so I'm going to show you two that we, we, we do. One is the mitochondria which is the powerhouse of the cell. And the other guy on the right is Hades, who is the god of the other world. So let's talk about <laughs> Hades right now. So this man here was Richard Smalley. He won the Nobel Prize for the discovery of fullerene. It's an interesting story about him, because he was at Rice. Uh, his son and my daughter were in the same preschool. We had a party at our pool, it was at our house, it was 100 degrees, we were in the pool, and I was speaking to this pretty distinguished looking man, I know who he was. I said, what are you doing? Really? He said, I'm a scientist. I said, oh, I'm kind of a scientist. I said, what's your area? He said, it's fullerenes. I said, fullerenes, really? He said, you know what they are? Nobody knows what they are. I said, I, yeah, I know what they are. I said, there's those C60 carbon structures. They're like a geodesic dome. I said, so there's some guy at Rice University who won a Nobel Prize for that. I said, yeah, that's me. <laughs> oh, so he and I had collaborated for years. He passed away from leukemia of all things. Oh. But his lab of about almost 100 people and I continue to collaborate and together we've published it. That's probably my biggest uh, claim to fame is I published a paper with a Nobel laureate. Probably be my most important paper. <laughs> he, act, he actually bet me we couldn't image them because he said they're too small. I said, ah, they're just carbon. We can bind something to them. So we actually wrapped them and we covalently bound something to his nanotubes. And I won't tell you what the bet is for. But he, <laughs> he actually lost. And so we developed what we believe is going to be a holy grail, something called a nano -serine. So oh what's gosh. a nano syringe? A nano syringe is a syringe that would make individual injections of your magic drug into single cells. That's crazy. That's kind of what we wanted. We want to do. So how does a nano? How does a nano syringe? Hades was the god of the underworld, so we call them Hades nano syringes, and they're actually just an acronym for HCC antibody drug enhancement system. So HCC is a specialized nanotube that shatters into 25 nanometer clusters uh, and the way it works is we make these tiny little nanotubes and we fill them with drugs and we put an antibody on them. I don't know if you know about quantum mechanics, but below 100 nanometers the laws of physics are different. So if you put this drug inside, the drug is designed to be to like lipid and to hate water. So in the aqueous environment of the blood, which is water, it won't come out. So you have like a little core syringe holding this drug. So Nancy nurse comes and gives the injection of this, and then once they reach the cell, the, mem the, the antibody binds to the surface of the cell, and then the, the, the nano syringe likes lipid. The cell membrane is full of lipid, so it gets like a nano injection into the cell membrane. And if you just look at a cell culture, in 24 hours we get 93% cell kill. Uh, and here's kind of how it works. Nano syringes are surrounded by specific peptides with a chemotherapeutic drug core. Due to the unique structure of a nano syringe, it does not bind to healthy cells. You can video it, but you'll have it. It's on your stick. The okay. nano syringe is labeled with a peptide that is specific to a binding site so see, on the cancer cell. To the cancer cell However, drug resistance in. frequently results from elevated expression of intracellular drug pumps in cancer cells. So it goes these in, pumps but now the chemotherapy going to pump it back out. In fact, it's one of the biggest problems for these pumps out here. 
Houston Methodist that the cell has recognized or has something for him and tries to pump it out. The highest two cell that we can poison our chosen for drug loading. So not only do we put the chemotherapy in, but we put another drug in that poisons. A drug cocktail is designed with four chemotherapeutic drugs selected for their synergistic interaction and simultaneous drug pump inactivation. So watch this video now. When injected, the nanosyringes adhere only to the cancer cells. Once they bind, they act like a slow-release drug injection system. Two of the chemotherapeutic drugs disable the pumps, while the other so two drugs to get out wash the malignant cell wow. with toxic chemotherapy, causing the cancer cells to die. Well, from that graph, it looked like it took less than a day. Right, and we've actually done this in, in animals uh, where we have all the, all, the, all the treated animals are alive at almost 200 days, and, wow. all the, and all the control animals are bad. Now, do you know who this guy is? Yeah, Norman Schwarzkopf. So, I had the opportunity to go hunting with my good old boys, with Norman Schwarzkopf. It was a benefit for uh, a, a, a veterinary hospital in Colorado. Anyway, we were sitting in a, in a uh, Holiday Inn Hotel, Hospitality suite, and he was smoking cigars and drinking whiskey. And I wish I had a video because he actually was General Westmoreland's attitude in terms of the Vietnam War. He knew more about the Vietnam War than anybody alive. Yeah. But so I, you know, after a little, after everyone was a little loosened up, I said, Listen, General, you're probably like the best military strategist of the century. What is the secret to your success? How do you develop these strategies to be so effective? And he looked at me, he said, Doc, Energy. I said, what are you talking about? He said, energy. He said, well, I want to take out an enemy, figure out where the power grid is, where's the water, where's the communication, you know, where's the radio, TV, I take all of that out. He said, nobody can talk to each other. Everybody's paralyzed. We just walk in. Mm -hmm. so, I said, <laughs> so I said, you know, that's interesting. Where's the energy in the cell? And I love General Schwarzkopf, who actually gave me this. This was um, a smart bomb. A smart bomb is a bomb that's very specifically targets at, at something. So this was dropped from 10 miles high and was to, to, to target this uh, plane sitting underneath the bridge. And of course, now my video's not working, but well, anyway, it, you'll see it, it was right there. It just, it just blows it up, right? So you, you want to develop a very, very specific target. And so, Martin and I came up with this together, actually. Turns out that glioblastomas overexpress a specific enzyme called monoamine oxidase B. And this monoamine MAOB is found on the mitochondria. The mitochondria are the powerhouse of the cell. So I said, look, Martin, could we make something that would target the mitochondria, that would take out the energy grid, take out the power grid, like Schwarzkopf was saying? And you said, yeah. So we made a molecule. And we did this by computer modeling that would bind to that MAOB. And what happens is it binds to the MAOB, which is on the outer surface of the mitochondria. And Martin made this so that as soon as it binds, it becomes positively charged. The normal molecule has no charge. It binds, it becomes positively charged. The mitochondria has a minus 180 millivolt. So it gets pulled across into the mitochondria because of the electrical charge. And if you do the calculations, you get, ten, you get a thousand to one. Okay. inside. And once it gets inside, it, it kills the DNA. So it's kind of like a, a roach motel. You know, the roaches check in, but they can't check out. Once it gets in there, it does its work. It kills the DNA in the mitochondria. And here's a really interesting thing. Mitochondria has its own DNA. You just think of a cell in the nucleus having DNA. Mitochondria has its DNA. Mitochondria can't repair its DNA. It's, once you kill it, it has no repair. It's not uh -huh. So it's an, it's an Achilles heel for DNA, and it's energy. So it's Schwarzkopf. It's not my idea, it's Schwarzkopf's idea. <laughs> so we tried this, and sure enough, it works. And you can see that uh, it, it, in, in flank models and cell culture and in human, in human tissue, it works. And so here's a little description of this, also on your video. At Houston Methodist, an investigational pro-drug known as MP Mus, successfully kills human glioblastoma cells. Martin was saying that MP Mus selectively targets the, the mitochondrial right, so we have a glioblastoma cells. 
surface. Yeah, because of something Unlike silly, nuclear it? DNA, when mitochondria DNA is destroyed, right? it cannot right. be repaired, yeah. it will shut down, thus depriving the, the cancer cell do. of its source of energy. MP MUS is activated by a mitochondrial surface enzyme called monoamine oxidase B. Gliomal cells express more than five times MAOB, in fact, in our and therefore the activate a much GBA. larger amount of MP MUS. Which we just published that this year. It's a substrate time. for MAOB. When so bound, it's just how you might untargeted early detection, but it's just how you might into detect a targeted, that you've got a real blast stomach and take agent. blood samples and see. You can do molecular imaging of this. The is a very good question. Negative we charge. have both applications. 99.9% .9 of the newly formed positively charged because drug I wondered, just drawn inside how the How Kelly ever got this thing? She the mitochondrial made, DNA is then yeah, attacked by high levels of the drug, causing breaks. And of course she had Unlike lots of scary DNA, DNA the, the mitochondrial DNA okay. cannot repair itself she got over the concussion. and self destruct Spring, she was back playing soccer Leo like a champ, cells played soccer used their that energy source in 2013 died. like a champ, and then at the preseason for college, all of a sudden, bang, it just hit. It came on that fast. You so know, I'm wondering, where the heck did it come from? Uh, it's very interesting. People, you know, Harvey Cushing, who was the father of American neurosurgery, talked about tumors arising from traumatic scars. Uh, uh, now, we don't know that about GBM, but there is a theory that the trauma can induce mm -hmm. tumor growth. I wonder if that wasn't... It's hard to say, because there wasn't know, anything that they ever saw on, on the... Uh, on the uh, scans from from her concussion, and it was not her first concussion either. It, like most soccer players, they get more concussions than uh, football players do. Yeah. And I have a field hockey eighth grader, so oh, uh, so you're familiar with this. Bad. I should have had something by now. So I mean, <laughs> I think the Peak Center. If what I can say about us is we have protocols available. That everyone yeah. else have. We have abilities to change protocols. We have novel protocols. We have immunotherapy, nanosyringe, spark bomb, stem cell, gene therapy immune therapy, we have the laser therapy. If you call my, our center, you get somebody 24-7. I answer the phone calls in Hawaii. Uh, and I have people here that can see a patient within 24 hours. I think we have a really good continuity of care. We've kind of set this up the so truth that we, like you know, yeah. we're, we're some of the thing we have. Our radiation oncology here is one of the best in the nation. I don't know how much you got to see the hospital, but the hospital has these eye care values. And so, let me see if I can remember it. Integrity, compassion, accountability, respect, and excellence. So every employee in this hospital goes through this sort of indoctrination about this is the way you have to behave. And I have patients from all over the world, you know, and they really say, boy, you know, the orderly and the, 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 the nursing assistant who took care of me was really just great. You know, and, and people get fired if they don't you know, meet those standards. So it's a, it's a nice place to be. So, you know, we have tumor genes, we have high throughput screening, we have all these other things. And then you saw our brand new space, one stop shopping, we have neuro oncology, radiation oncology, neurosurgery, physical medicine, psychiatry, neurology 24 7. I have a physician assistant, I have a care navigator to take people around, and I have all these people coming. And the other thing about the gift, as you know, is there's no operational cost, and actually, your gift is matched by the foundation. When you, who, by what foundation? By the Methodist Hospital. Foundation. Methodist Hospital That's Foundation. That's only because of an agreement that I have with them. That is unique. That's, That's unique very cool. Agreement. It will, if you give it to someone else, it will not necessarily be matched. Well, I'm happy to see that it. That was when. Well, to be honest with you, they've always been nice to me. I've been sure. here many years. Okay, I love the place. They were very respectful. But when I renegotiated a contract. I didn't ask for a lot more money, but I instead said, if I raise money, I'd like to have the foundation match. And so it was part of a... Smart. Uh, I like and it. And that was before the peak. That was the time before. And, you know, the hospital is a great place. They really want to see their academics and their research continue to flourish, so they, they were willing to do that. Sure. And you have to give them credit for that. Mm -hmm. I do. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, but it's very helpful a for a donor to say, listen, your dollars are going to be matched dollar. Your donations are matched dollar for dollar. So, yeah. you know, if you give one dollar and it's worth two, that's good. So, the money that we raised. So, $25,000, and I already verified this, has gone into a fund along with your $25,000.
Thank you guys so much for clicking on this video and joining us for Team Kelly Visiting Houston Methodist Part 2. Uh, make sure you check out our social media links that were just on the screen, especially kellykickingcancer.org. All of the information for our upcoming annual gala for the 7th of October is up there. If you haven't seen Kelly's story or the previous Part 1 video, make sure you check those out as well. And if you haven't subscribed to our channel already, make sure you give this video a thumbs up and definitely subscribe so that you don't miss out on future content. Thanks again to Dr. Baskin for spending time with us at Houston Methodist and talking to us about all of the upcoming future technology that they're working on to cure brain cancer. Thank you so much, everybody, and have a wonderful evening.